beats and bloggers. Stay with Gemma as she gets the latest from the UAE's biggest influencers. So we know Dubai winter, it is en route, which means beach parties are about to lift off. So there's no better time to talk about that gold bikini bod or Speedos bod if you're a guy. And who could be more qualified than Michael Soule, co-founder of Beyond Human and performance nutritionist. Thanks for joining me today. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> How are you? Good morning. So tell us, first up, what does it mean to be a performance nutritionist? Um, well, I mean, a lot of people kind of get a bit daunted by the term performance and there's a big association, obviously, with sport being that kind of performance elitist uh, label. But I, I, the way I try to position it is performance can be like just day-to-day performance as a general person so feeling good every day um and then also like performance uh, especially in the workplace particularly here in dubai is a lot of people find yeah the weekends they're all well and good fired up socializing and all the rest of it and then during the week their performance isn't too <laughs> they want to pull up but they can't someday they're lagging exactly <laughs> Okay, so you're saying it's not just for, as you said, elite sports people. It's regular Joes like myself. Exactly. Okay, so just getting the most out of ourselves, feeling better, moving better, living better through the combination of fitness and nutrition. Yeah. So how do you do this? What factors do you evaluate? So obviously everyone's got their own goals as well with that. So breaking down what people's goals are, whether that's weight loss, weight gain or whatever it might be. Um, and then obviously giving an individual approach to that. Um, a lot of the things that I will look at, particularly because nutrition's my main focus, is what people are doing typically day to day with their nutrition. If there's anything that I think needs addressing, obviously I'll intervene and do that. Um, do you notice I've hidden all my snacks? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's some green tea floating around yeah. in here. I think that's Gold pretty good. Gold star for that. It? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's it's a lot of it is just trying to get to know people, um, finding what triggers or what what uh, parts of their environment might be negatively impacting their results, mm-hmm. um, and then addressing that as we need to do it. Okay, yeah. So really making them aware of yes. things that they may not actually know is uh, yep. sort of um, sabotaging their yeah, attempts. That's it. And I mean, a lot of the time with um, nutrition, a lot of people will come and speak to a nutritionist and they walk hope to walk out the door with all the answers. Yeah, on um, the one stop. Exactly. Mm-hmm. When realistically, like anything, it takes a long time to learn and understand what they, they need for themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a huge mindset component with it that you need to learn and develop and kind of take away from that and instill in habits and all these sorts of things. Ah, so it's not an overnight miracle. Unfortunately, and t- yeah. <laughs> Talking of miracles, Michael, there are so many products out there, cl- uh, products, programs claiming to be the next miracle changer. So it's hard to know what's genuine, what works, what doesn't. So how does your approach differ? What tools do you give your clients to ensure that they actually develop long-term results? Yeah, so feeding off that, Obviously, once I've kind of broken things down into what needs work on, we'll set down different targets where we want to try and focus our attention. Um, And then my kind of method of practice is very educational. So Mm -hmm. I want people to learn um, how to do things for themselves rather than, as I said, just giving them one product or one solution, whether it's stop eating carbohydrate or take this supplement or you have to wake up at 5 30 in the morning and do this kind of thing mm. i'd rather teach them the fundamental sorry the fundamentals of why they would need to do something to get them to that end result mm. because i feel like anything if they if they know how to do it themselves uh chances are it's going to be a lot long a lot more long standing than if i'm to give them an answer two weeks down the line they could almost forget about it and of course yeah straight back into where they are yeah train themselves so it's sustainable Um, but you're saying education is key eh? yeah and a holistic approach so it's not just one factor you've got to look at the nutrition you've got to look at their habits you've got to look at is there a product that will help you know how's their fitness and uh, yeah what cheeky things do they not even realise are actually just uh, failing their attempts to get fit and fabulous we will be right back we're live on Instagram Dance FM UAE I'll be back with Michael Soul. 
beats and bloggers. Stay with Gemma as she gets the latest from the UAE's biggest influencers. I'm back with Michael Soul, co-founder of Beyond Human and performance nutritionist. Now, I can't miss this opportunity to ask you to weigh in on the caffeine debate. So generally speaking, it's a staple pretty much in everyone's daily life. What are your thoughts? Is it good or is it bad? Look, um, caffeine's obviously, as you said, it, it's it's almost abused in some cases by some by a lot of people. Uh, highly reliant on it to just get them through the day, and this kind of feeds onto the comment that I was talking about trying to optimize people's performance during their day. Mm. Um, in one in one case, caffeine may be highly beneficial. For example, an athlete or someone training quite regularly to use for its stimulatory benefits. Whereas obviously someone who is in an office job, a uh, teacher, uh, whatever it might be, if they're constantly relying on caffeine to kind of get them up and keep them kind of ticking throughout the day, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you could argue that perhaps maybe it's probably not the best option and there's a few other things going on beneath the bonnet that need addressing. Um, what you do find is, like you said, a lot of people are relying on it very, very, very heavily. Mm-hmm. Um, when in fact it might just be a case where okay let's sit down let's have a look at your sleep quality how many uh, portions of fruit and vegetables are you eating per day is your micro nutrient intake optimal um perhaps maybe you using caffeine as a stimulant to make you quote unquote feel better every day is perhaps not the best option let's taper it to the morning where yes okay everyone kind of struggles to get out of bed in the morning a lot of the time yeah um let's Hand try and up. keep your caffeine intake earlier on in the day so that later on in the day it's not going to have a negative impact on your sleep and also what goes up must come down right so a lot of people will go up with caffeine and then feel that massive drop Mid-morning. afterwards mm. yeah in which in normal circumstances they'd reach for another cup of coffee another cup of coffee another cup of coffee um and long term that reliance is obviously not beneficial. Okay, so it very much depends on the caffeine's application, whether yep. consumption is yep. a positive thing for you or not. Exactly. But I'm going to take that as a yes, one in the morning's okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, one to two cups. Generally speaking, they say it's about 400 milligram uh, per day is kind of that average intake well in that case i'm off the hook um you initiated a hashtag movement just last month so it's named hashtag michael nutrients what's this all about okay so um hashtag michael nutrients is basically my little twist on micronutrients as we as i just briefly touched on um because the whole idea is for me to try and emphasize the importance of fruit and vegetables um i think because of this whole influence with A lot of it perhaps coming from social media, like flexible dieting, people kind of eating whatever they want to within their calorie intake. People have almost disregarded the importance of fruit and vegetable. Mm, Good point. Um, The way that I like to think of it is, yes, um, calories are a fundamental factor with nutrition, but we've also got to look at food quality. And unfortunately, there is a big divide between the two now because of the influence of whether it is from social media or if it's just because people like to kind of follow extremes exactly as you say it could be zero calories but zero nutrients as well what's the point yeah so the whole idea behind the hashtag is to kind of build this um emphasis on people maximizing their micronutrient although i put my own twist on it as michael nutrients with their meals um lots of color lots of volume Mm -hmm. um calorie wise fruit and vegetables are generally pretty low in calories anyway Mm -hmm. so um yeah basically maximizing the volume of that meal but also getting plenty of micronutrients in there and micronutrients they are these magic wands vitamins minerals all these sorts of things pretty much the foundations that our body needs yeah to function yeah um so is it right now it's a bit of an art though or science between absorbing some micronutrients so i've been told for example when i eat foods high in iron I need yep. to pair it with something citrus to make sure I actually um, the vitamin C will help my body absorb it better. Yep. So 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 you've got two sources of iron. You've got non-heme iron and heme iron, and depending on whether they come from animal products or vegetable products. Mm-hmm. So the iron absorbed from vegetable products is a lot harder to digest. 
um, the iron that comes from animal products is a lot easier and more bioavailable for us to digest. So the whole pairing um, theory or method is more focused at those uh, iron sources from vegetables. Okay, so pairing them, like you said, something with a high vitamin C content, so whether it's a glass of orange juice or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but in reality, if you are following a plant-based diet and relying solely on vegetables for your sources of iron, you're probably better off supplementing with an iron supplement. Um, if animal products are a high component of your iron intake, then the pairing isn't really going to make too much of a difference. Um, do One. other micronutrients though have this uh, yep. theory as well that yep. you should yep. pair it up? Yeah, so uh, things like vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin. So you want to, if you are to supplement with vitamin D, for example, you want to ensure that you're having it with something fat soluble. So whether it's another supplement of omega three or something like that. Oh, okay. Or, so salmon, like yeah, fatty fish, things like that. Interesting. Yep. Never so knew. Or a nut. Love my nuts. In fact, the perfect meal if you were trying to get. A high vitamin, t vitamin D intake would be green leafy vegetables with salmon or an oily fish or something like that because mi miracle food is green leafy vegetables. You'll always see it in a textbook. Yeah. I learned that when I was at uni. You could answer any question with green leafy vegetables. <laughs> what what nutrient is high in what uh, nutrient is high in this 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 green leafy vegetables as you go to. That's how you passed yeah. <laughs> university. I thought Answers you were. Uh, I thought you were describing what dinner is on the menu tonight. <laughs> yeah. um, add me to the table, please. Now to finish up, Michael, what's a practical piece of advice that you can share with us that we can implement today that will benefit our well-being? Okay, um, it might sound boring and not so revolutionary, but work on Keep sleep. It simple. Work on sleep quality. Mm-hmm. Um, aim to try and get about seven to eight hours per night if you can and drink plenty of water that's it and uh, lots of micronutrients as well okay. <laughs> i love that well thanks for sharing your expert knowledge michael really enjoyed hearing about it thank you you can catch our full beats and bloggers interview at dancefm.com also on our instagram live dancefm uae into it now kda tanash just say dancefm